Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just rearranging yeah. the furniture. <laughs> I love it. Now, the headlines have been filled with stories of the so-called bedbug invasion. It started in Paris. Uh, yeah, have a look at this. They were even spotted on a train to Lille. Uh, I've got looking at them. It makes your skin crawl. It instantly makes me feel itchy. Now they've reached the UK. Here are some of them on the London Underground. I mean, I would not be that calm if there was a bed bug on me on the tube. Uh, there have also been breakouts in Manchester, Leicester and Bristol as well. So here to talk us through everything, we need to know as pest control expert and apprentice star, Mark Mosley. Hello, Mark. Lovely to have you back here. Thanks I mean, me. this is not the topic I really wanted to be talking about because it just suddenly makes you itchy. But there is a big problem. What's going on? Like, why Paris? Why is it all kicked off there? Yeah, well, Paris is a very beautiful city and it's always full of tourists. But also at the same time, we've got sporting events and fashion shows there at the moment. So they've got this huge influx of people. And that's why this bed bug invasion has now got bigger. And we've always had it in the UK and we see a huge spike at the end of summer. So people are coming back from their holidays. They're bringing it back with them. And then about four to six weeks later the infestation gets so big that they then start seeing these things and the problem reason it gets so big is because bed bugs are inbred so a female can give birth and the boy when it reaches adulthood in about six to eight weeks it'll then mate with its mum and then the infestation <gasps> gets bigger so yes sounds like a documentary in itself i know it does yeah. <laughs> so what do they actually look like so we've got some over there and as you can see they're about the size of a small pea and they're red and they're full of blood at the moment then ones Ooh. i picked them up last week from a gentleman and he'd had a treatment on his bedroom and there was no bed bugs on the bed when I went round. So when I looked, at the end of his bed, he had a backpack and he just got off the underground. This is a true story. And I uh, looked on the back of his backpack and there was about 10 bed bugs. And I said, you just come off the underground in the tube and you're dropping these off. So they'll be attracted to sweat and CO2 and it was the backpack they were going to thinking it was a blood mill. So yes, these have actually probably just come from the London underground last week. Oh no, I was on the tube on Saturday. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you probably got a couple in your pocket. You reckon? Yeah. But, uh, well, no, I don't. You probably don't. <laughs> I said, yeah. I know uh, we're going to ask you more on this, but I also want to bring in Tim now, who is uh, who uses pet detection dogs. He's got Hector the detector with him and uh, their handler, Emma, is also here. Because you use animals, don't you, to detect bed bugs? Uh, we do, Steph. We've got uh, a company that has specially trained canines. Uh, we go across the country and they'll sniff out the bed bugs for us. So, so how does it work? Well, we're going to give you a quick demonstration. So Emma's just put Hector's harness on, which is the switch for Hector to know that he's in work mode. Right. So if you watch Hector around the bed, Hector will actively go to all the corners of the bed. He'll sniff along the seams of the bed. He'll, he'll get round every element of the bed. Now, if he finds something, which he won't on this one, guys, yeah, hopefully. thank God. Hopefully. If he does find something, he freezes and he gets his nose as close as he can to the bugs. Yeah. And then when that's done, when the handler's finished the screen, the dog will go away, they'll come back and they'll verify and then they treat. Wow. And is it, have you, tra obviously you've trained the dog to do this. Is this by... Not me, I haven't trained him personally. But, but how uh, does it work? So it's exactly the same as your explosive dogs, your drugs dogs. They're all trained exactly the same way. We just swap out the scent. Yeah. So we use a bed bug pheromone, live bed bugs, and to them it's all a game. They just want their tennis ball. Yeah. How many, how many has he sniffed out then his time so far, Hector the detective? So Hector's been with us for a few years, so thousands. Wow. wow. Gosh, that's incredible, isn't it? But what about if you haven't got, say, Hector, a trained dog? How can you check at home yourself? Yeah. What are you so, looking for? First of all, if you've come back from holiday and you're starting to get bites and you get three or four bites, they'll be in a row or a cluster. What happens? The bed bug comes out and it'll probe a few times and when it's had finds a nice spot, it will then start sucking some blood out of you. So if you wake up in the morning, you've got three or four bites, you need to then start looking around your bed. And the first things I would start doing, I'd get a torch, always use a powerful torch. When you shine on a bed bug, it will start glowing back at you. It's the red, like the juices for the blood. And then you want to be looking around the headboard. This is where they're going to be. So around these back bits here, all in the corners, and this is a great nesting spot. They don't really like varnish wood, but they love sort of wood that hasn't been treated such as this. And if you find bed bugs, you'll see them over there, as you see, and this is what you need to do. The first thing that I would do as a self-help option is get your hoover. So you find bed bugs, get your hoover, get the brush part, because this will help remove the eggs and the bed bugs. So let's say we found bed bugs in that corner. We'll then slowly just start removing them with the brush and they'll get sucked up. Once you've gone around your whole back of the headboard and you've checked other areas such as this is another
common spot. Do you, know, do you know what? While we're doing this, guys, would you mind going checking our green room? Because I'm sure there's some bugs about in there. that. Yeah, about is that all right? That. Were you all right to go? No with problem Hector? at all. And Thanks for that. Mark. Cheers. Can I just ask Mark? Would yeah. they be in like a group, like a cluster, or would they be sort of separated, or do they? They have will any be in group? a cluster. Yes. So um, they sort of aggregate together. So they will be in a cluster usually, and they could be their breeding. You see, but they can if you've got so many. I've been in rooms before where there's been hundreds, and they've been in the corners of the rooms. So you need to check everywhere, hoover everywhere, and again around your seams of your mattress is another one. So around like zips and seams, that's the big one. Once you've checked everywhere and you're confident you've got rid of the bed bugs, take the hoover bag straight outside. Do not leave it next to the bed or in the utility cupboard because the bed bugs will just walk out. So get it into a plastic bag, seal the bag, put it in your wheelie bin. That's the first port of call. And it's, I've heard, is lavender oil good for, for getting rid of them as well? Lavender oil is more of a repellent. People put this in their you know, wardrobes and things to repel moths. It's more basically just moving the bed bug or the insect on for another room, if you like. So lavender oil, eucalyptus oil, peppermint, tea tree. No, you want to start using hoovers, get rid of. And if you're not sure you've got bed bugs, but you're getting bites, you can get little pheromone monitors and a little sticky pad. You can stick the sticky pad and the pheromone monitor and the bed bugs will be attracted to this. This is an aggregation pheromone. They'll be attracted to this and then they'll stick on the edges and go, yeah, we've got bed bugs, we're in bother. Oh, so what, what else can you do? And is there anything you should be doing with your bedding? Or anything like that? Yes, so bedding, first thing, if you find bed bugs, get your bedding. Be careful when you start dragging it through the property to your washing machine because mm. bed bugs may drop off. Get it in a bag, get it in the washing machine. It has to be washed at 60 degrees and over. Extreme temperatures kill off these things. And like the gentleman I spoke about with the bag, if you've got delicate items because you've got a nice cashmere scarf you've just thrown on the floor and you don't want to put it in the washing machine at high temperatures, get it in a bag and you can put it in the freezer for 72 hours, three days, and extreme temperatures will kill off the insect itself and the eggs. This is the big thing. You want to be killing off the eggs. So extreme temperatures, over 60 degrees wash or three days in the freezer. Also, if you've got pets, I've got two dogs, can they get the bed bugs as well? Can they move them around the house? Not so much. So, I mean, a, a bed bug, as you can see, it's a flat insect horizontally. So they struggle trying to get through the hair follicles. Whereas a flea that we also treat, another parasite, it's a flat insect vertically and they can swim through hair. So it's found that less hairier people, so if you've got two people in bed and one's more hairy than the other, it's the less hairy person who tends to get a uh, uh, bitten because oh, they, be they, can't get, yeah. they can't get <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> they can't get through oh, the yes, uh, they can't, it's difficult for them to get through the hair. So <laughs> fleas for pets and bed bugs for humans. What about, I know you've got a steamer there as well. Would you could you use Yes, that? if you if you are lucky enough to have a steamer at home or you have a steamer, sorry, again it's the extreme temperature. So you want to get it right on the animal and the animal with the insect and the eggs and you blast it. You want to be doing it for a good 10 seconds and it'll kill it or break down the embryo in the egg. So steamers is another good one. And the only other option you've got is insecticides. We've got a few insecticides. It is difficult with some of the products on the market. They're just not good enough, but there is something you can use, which is a natural um, insecticide and it's diatomaceous earth you can sprinkle this in a sieve around the bed it's not harmful it's a natural sediment that actually people take as a food supplement and this is great because when it sticks to the bed bug um, it basically makes little cuts in the bed bug abrasions and it, it then sucks out the nutrients all the oils and the fats and it kills the bed bug within five days so if you want to get diatomaceous earth very inexpensive about eight to ten pounds spray it around the bed frame around the mattress and then put your bed in on top around the edge of the room bed bugs within five to ten days you should eradicate them so so that's not a bad one to use. Just want to ask you, you know the bites that you said to look out for? Yes. Would they be like, say, a mosquito bite? Would they be itchy? Yes. So, I mean, they basically, they, when they bite, they put an anticoagulant in you, stop the blood congealing, and they'll be quite pronounced like a mosquito bite, and they will be itchy. So fleas are tiny little bites. Bed bug bites, you'll see it very pronounced like a mosquito bite. Can they cause damage to your your house and your bed and they can't like cause well. any structural damage at all i mean people are throwing away thousands of pounds worth of beds and things you think well why have you done that and they haven't got rid of the bed bugs and they put a new bed in there and the bed bugs come back so don't go throwing away any bed in any beds unless you really want to get a new bed let's get it treated first of all once it's treated and you want to get a new bed because it's tired and old then do it please don't lob away loads of expensive furniture not like when you have an ex then and mm. you get all the new bedding no. out exactly yeah. another tip just stay hairy yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
ask about, while we've got you, have you heard of these Chinese mitten crabs? Yes, I mean, it's not something that pest control companies are dealing with. It's DEF for the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. And the reason they're called mitten Ooh. crabs is because of the hair. They've been around since the 30s, found in the River Thames, and they're now invading the waterways. They're known as one of the world's 100th evasive species. And they're eating up, you know, fish eggs and fish and uh, basically disturbing the biodiversity of each, you know, the waterways. And it's, it's not a nice thing. Not something you're going to find in your bed then? Not going to find them in your bed, no, but uh, thankfully they're the size of a dinner plate, them things. Oh, yeah, they're, my goodness. And they can get through here. Yeah. <laughs> Watch yourself, Seth. Watch yourself. <laughs> it's the other type of crabs I've got problems with. Anyway, <gasps> just kidding. <laughs> much Mark that was great still to come what not to wear Susanna Constantine is here to tell us about breaking the stigma around wearing hearing aids and we're meeting the woman who was so fed up with waiting for her Prince Charming she decided to go it alone and marry herself we're catching up with her right after this <laughs>